Hi, I'm Amy. I was born in Wales and I'm a teacher. This is Alex. He was born in Ukraine and he's a doctor. In 2024, we decided to take our careers on the road. We're spending the year traveling full time and working remotely. Feel free to follow along each week as we move from country to country and give you our travel tips for each place. This week, we take a trip from Bundaberg to Lady Elliot Island in order to snorkel the Great Barrier Reef. It's one of those once in a lifetime experiences where you pinch yourself the entire time. This is the final stop on our trip up the East Coast so feel free to go back and watch the other videos in the Australia series. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss where we head to next. Today we are going to the Great Barrier Reef. If we get a ride there. There are no Ubers in this town. There are no DDs in this town. There are no taxis that service where we are going. It's a tiny airport, tiny plane that goes to the Great Barrier Reef. So I had the idea to look on like lime scooters. There are no lime scooters. There are no beam scooters, but there are something called neuron scooters. So Alex is downloading the app and then we are gonna go run to these scooters and take a scooter to the airport and hopefully we get there in time. Then we'll be going to the Great Barrier Reef. Let's go. Our salvation is a scooter. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this one and then Alex is gonna go try to find a second one. Looks like someone else had the same idea as us. Mine had no helmet, which is really sad, but. We are six minutes behind. We are, okay. We are six minutes behind, says Alex. We are across the street from the airport now, so. Thanks, scooters. That would have been an hour and a half walk. Only about a 15 minute scooter, so. Let's go. We just got to the airport. We're waiting on our pilot. This is probably going to be the tiniest airplane ever. There's only eight of us. I'm kind of scared. But it's super sunny, which is good. When I checked the weather a couple days ago, it was supposed to be rainy. So this is actually pretty nice. I can believe you scooted here. We did. 15 minutes. I wanted airport. to take a video on the scooter, but it wasn't safe. And I was so stressed trying to like hold my phone, see where we were going, navigate the scooter. Also, there are no sidewalks, it was just on the road. Also, mine didn't come with a helmet, so I was scared I was gonna die. And it's also illegal, so I was scared I was gonna get pulled over. Just, adrenaline is already pumping for the day. It's so exciting, but I'm so nervous. We're just getting walked to our plane. <gasps> I would have done that. I'm so jealous. Thank you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Max weight 280 pounds. <laughs> and a little bit about these exits and the aircraft. These are like the bachelor bachelorette seats. <laughs> this is more than spirit. Great. Good. The pilot asked Alex and I to sit in the back, which meant we would be in charge at the door in case of an emergency because it was also considered the exit row, which was kind of terrifying. But the view of Bundaberg was really cool to see as we made the 30 minute trip to Lady Elliot Island. There is another island called Lady Musgrave where you can also snorkel the Great Barrier Reef and that island takes you there by boat. So if you're not a fan of tiny planes like these, I would recommend that trip instead. We made it to Lady Elliot Island, and yes, I know what you're thinking. The runway is in fact just a grass and dirt strip, which I found weird since there are sidewalks all over the island, but I guess the grass works just fine. It made for a very bumpy landing, but I was just thankful to be on land. Once we landed, they gave us an incredibly refreshing welcome drink and a tour. There was a lot more on the island than it appeared to have from the sky. There was a map of the three different snorkeling locations, the lockers, bathrooms, showers, and the gift shop where you can purchase Wi-Fi packages if you need that. They then brought us to the equipment rental where you can pick up your snorkeling goggles, fins, and wetsuit, 
All of those are included with your ticket price if you purchase this experience from the Lady Elliot website. So it's pretty cool. I wear glasses and I don't like things touching my eyes, so I've never worn contacts before. They actually have prescription uh, scuba goggles. And so I'm hopefully going to be able to better see out can there. I, can you see them? Yeah. I'm uh, hopefully better able to see out there with them um, because they're actually prescription. And they're free. And they are free, yes. I had to put it down a deposit, but as long as they return unscathed, I get my money back. So fingers crossed. <laughs> don't lose them out there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't glasses and I just have regular scuba but oh there's hair in my that's not mine I haven't put this on yet we have a glass bottom boat tour in a minute, a minute. ago <laughs> so we have to go to that but I'll take some videos of it they loaded us up into the trailer and drove us across the island to the beach where we were boarding the glass bottom boat it only took about five minutes and this boat ride was also included in the price of the ticket as well as the lunch that we got after this, which was delicious. This was our first time seeing the water from land and we were amazed at how clear it was. South Pacific. We are taking this boat about 15 minutes out and then we're going to get to snorkel 45 minutes. Alex had a snorkeling lesson so now he's feeling a little bit more confident <laughs> than he was. Um, but really, really pretty cool days And a really cool glass bottom boat. So we can see what we're, what we're zooming over in the bottom of the boat. It's a turtle coming up for air. You might want to bring Dramamine if you get seasick because it's windy out here. So just got through the safety briefing for the vessel. Wow. We have large cameras located on the left hand side up the front of the seat. We also have a first aid kit. And as a result, that seems to know that algae has just produced uh, two big products. It's dying. After we snorkeled, they brought us back to the other side of the island. So there's like a little classroom slash tiny bit of a museum because you can read about the different animals that you'll see in the water and the different shells and then the different birds that you'll see on the island. So it's a cute little museum classroom of sorts. In there is where we got our buffet lunch, which was really nice. There's also drinks that you can get. There's a whole bar. And then down this pathway, there's a little playground if you have your kids with you. And there's a pool over there. Where I did my snorkeling lesson. That's, yes, where Alex did his snorkeling lesson prior to us going out and snorkeling. White cap naughty. Oh, yep, that's called a white capped naughty. 
that bird. They're all over. That's what you hear cawing. Then in there they have bathrooms and showers. And then our lockers and the locker room is over there. They also put your luggage in there if you're staying overnight on the island. There are different little huts you can stay in if you stay overnight. And they have a gift shop and reception where Alex got band-aids for his feet because his shoes are giving him blisters. And then that's where we got our snorkels. We're gonna walk across the tarmac, the landing strip, to go snorkel on the other side of the island. They have a convenient little pump of sunscreen. They also have defogging spray for your snorkel goggles. That is the runway and landing strip. Before we walk across the runway, we have to make sure that no planes are coming. We're going. We're going. And I don't see any planes coming or going, so I think we're good. That's our plane waiting for us to take us home later. So this building is where the staff lives on the island. There's a couple more buildings over here. They are the lighthouse keeper's cottages. And the lighthouse is right up there. And we are almost to the beach. I can't believe we're just like in the middle of the ocean right now. About to go snorkel with the Great Barrier Reef. Wow, what is life? Shoes. We got to the runway on our walk back and we cannot cross because the plane is taken off. So I think we have to stay up there at that red light. Now that the plane is up in the sky, up there, that guy, just in my bathing suit, walking across an active runway, me and my flippers, in the middle of the ocean. We got showered and changed, and unfortunately, it was time to head home. Our flight back was on an even smaller plane this time, but I got to sit right behind the pilot. I wanted to sit next to him, but someone else beat me to it. If you do happen to do this trip and you like getting to see the plane take off and land from the front, go ahead and ask the pilot right when they get there. Both the pilot on the way there and the way back didn't seem to mind and they even gave a headset to the man sitting in front so they could talk to him on it throughout the flight. But even the view from behind was incredible and more than compensated for how nervous I was to be above the clouds in a plane this small. We did hit a tiny bit of bad weather on the way back, but soon enough we were landing back in Bundaberg. on the ground safely which is amazing we had a great time i did get an injury yeah we got back to the airport it's beautiful by the way so tropical sunny breezy there are no cabs here there are no ubers in town there are no dbs in town basically the same issue we had coming here is the same issue we are having going back to our house except for this time my phone is dead. I do have a charger, but I can't charge it because my USB-C port is wet. So my phone keeps telling me to take out the charger so I can't charge my phone. So Alex could take a scooter back home using his phone and his app, but I can't take a scooter back home because my phone's dead. 
and it wouldn't be like he could start two sessions and he can't like go and come back. So we're just gonna hang out here, wait for my phone to dry, hopefully, and then charge it using the charging block and then take the scooters back home. Unless an Uber or a DD or a cab becomes available on any of the apps before that happens. Otherwise, we'll just enjoy this beautiful weather. It's 84 degrees, it's sunny and breezy. So we'll just sit and enjoy this until we can charge my phone. Alex likes these polka dot plants. They're actually kind of cool. What kind of plant is that? All right, phone finally charged up to 10%. So scooters it is. And the ones we took here this morning are still here. And this one has a helmet. Yay, we made it back to our Airbnb. Also another real, really cool thing is Alex and I love this ginger beer and it never occurred to me that it says Bundaberg at the top and that's where we are. We're that's in Bundaberg. Me. So we're gonna drink Bundaberg ginger beer in Bundaberg. Cheers. Bundy. We enjoyed a second ginger beer on the train back as we left Bundaberg and headed to our next adventure. Is this a video or a picture? It's a picture. This is us <laughs> on the train heading to Bundaberg, not Bundaberg, in case you were curious. It's Bundaberg. Apparently the locals call it Bundy. I'm Jesse Ken. Alex didn't believe me that there was a car door back here, so just taking a video to prove that someone is indeed bringing a car door to Bundaberg on the train. <laughs>